This is um, open work. I've drawn a larger version of this so that you can actually see. And normally I draw them um, life high, shall we say, you know, that we put on guns. But I'm just emphasizing now uh, how the old masters used to, or the London engravers or the English engravers used to do an open work type of scroll. And it was very attractive. Now I see some of the, I, I, as I mentioned before, I can't contradict any of the other type of scrolls that people do. And I see um, demonstrations. Um, I wouldn't say I disagree with them, but I, for a learner, I, I can understand that uh, you always can't get the gist of it and you try to emulate what that engraver or person that, that's drawing the scroll um, is doing. So you, sometimes you might get a little bit confused. You don't actually know because they just draw a, a larger leaf, you know, and they do two leaves or three leaves around a scroll. The technique we will use on these type of scrolls is a process of movement going around regularly. I reiterate what I said on the other things. It's like a ladder going around. See, each one of these here has got this uh, space here. Even this large one, if you break that in half, it's, uh, it's the size of one of these, you see, three or twice as large as that. So it's balanced. And even within the negative background, although this is going to be kept without cutting away, it's still fairly attractive. You've still got these uh, attractive shapes, you see. And sometimes they put a big leaf in that goes nowhere and it just... Um, well, to my mind, it's, uh, it just doesn't ring true. But it's the choice, and I can't disagree with anybody. Um, as I said before, if it's done by a master and done very well, that's all too good. But for novices to try to copy some of that, it's difficult because sometimes the leaves are so large that you don't know how to put the shading in and um, the balance goes haywire sometimes. Okay, I'll start again. So now, if you notice this, this is the cut I keep on emphasizing, the teardrop, the dark one. It cuts, it's got a cut that comes with shape. It's not monoline. See, there's a fine line over the top, then it comes down with the gravy. You see, your gravy would come like my pencil would work. Because I have it, a, a drawing, and I'm not moving it around like I could in a vice, I have to stop and start again. So I'll, I'll carry on this area here. Um, I continue what I did, you see. So there's a larger area coming here so that would have come round here so the backbone would have continued through here but we stopped it there to carry on down here you see to to make a, it flow outside and if you continue another scroll on that side and another scroll on this side that's how it would work you see this would have filled in the gap that would have been between here so I'll carry on, and as I mentioned, it's a, it's a ladder. And this is your road you're going around, and you're going to come to the some port. Somebody started to call this a fini uh, finial, um, the knob on the end of the screw. So I start here. Remember, you, this is a stem. This is the stem of the plant going here. These are the leaves that are growing off, and the leaves are fairly attractive. They're living virile leaves they're not floppy they're not this they're young plants that have got some life into them and they've got a shadow the sun is shining this side and the shadows this side that makes them stand out you see that and there i've darkened this one on just to give it a little bit more of an emphasis 
So here in, I will start where I will have said the, the stem starts. So it becomes a natural because you're doing your natural curve. You see, it's, it's going to go here, uh, just that little bit coming out like so. I would do this because this is what your graver would do. But if it's large, you may have cut this either side and, and cut away in, inside it, you see. So now I've got that, which is these here. See, there's hardly that movement. It's a crescent. It's almost like a hockey stick. Name it what you want, as long as you have that little shape. I will start here, and not always, not deeply, but I will come around here just to give it these, these shapes, because that is a, a, a fairly decent little shape. I'm getting a pencil that's got a little bit more into it. There again, you see, there's the stem. It's going to grow off here. It's not growing off the back, not this time. You can do it. There's no rule that you can't do it, but not all the way around. You can do one that comes uh, from the edge there and bring it around. There's so many variations, but at this stage, uh, I will just uh, emphasize the rhythm, shall we say, that you, you might need to get round. Uh, so there is our cut again here on this one so i don't want a big gap there you know so it's like shall we say here you have this gap coming around see this one here and these are not touching the backbone because this is open work you see so now to do that i will bring this one up here i don't know how uh, these leaves will turn out it's just when we were taught our gravers were our um, pencil, shall we say. That's a bit dark, that one. But then I'll take this one over the top here, just to give it another little shape, you see. So it's, it's different to all these these shapes here. We'll start again. Now, I could go up again because here I've travelled up this way, but that would have left a big gap in between here, you see, from there. But to give it variations, we put these little guys in here. You see, these are little sprouts coming out, um, leaves that are, uh, are young and they're ready to bud, shall we say. So I'll do that. I'll, do, I'll take this long one up here. It's a bit difficult with these smaller pencils to give you a, the full movement. So I'll move out there. I'm not moving out. Yes, I might be moving out of view. Um, so I, I've got this here now. So there we we'll go. One here. You see, as I mentioned, with the other styles of engraving or producing the leaf, they would have sharp, normally have a very sharp, type of leaf whereas I keep these soft these are soft leaves and no young there we go there's no one here and because I'm doing it like I would have an engraving you see I'm pushing here I'm not coming in backwards so all my strokes have this intention really as though I am engraving it so here I would have pushed this in here and you could have come back on it. Now, we could put this little guy in here just, just to make a little bit more of an interest, you know, something like so. See, I came back on that, but it's only because I'm drawing. See, so you, you would cut this in here, you would push that forward like so. Then you would have come over the top like that. And there you it's going to be in the shadows, so you could shade it like so. Okay. Now we're coming around again. So we start in there. Where the stem is, he's going to grow out again. He's coming here. Uh, 
All right, so there's the dark shadow, the sun shining on this one. So it's giving the, uh, the impression that it's uh, carved out of wood or carved out of stone and it has life to it. We start here again and we can just do a simple one this time. So a simple curve. You could do curves all the way around really, but this is a large one. And I'm giving you uh, the view of how some of these scrolls that were engraved on some of the older guns, the flintlocks and the percussion guns, they had this type of work on them. And they didn't have a lot of cutaway scroll. Uh, well, they did. They had it together with it. But um, this becomes... Uh, very attractive, simple type of scroll, done well. It, um, it's not overbearing. Uh, it's sophisticated because you've got a lot of the steel left on, shows it on a lock plate or whatever, but you do, you're showing the quality of the gun maker too, you know, because some of these actions and some of this filing that the the craftsmen do is superb and I don't necessarily like to see it saturated um, by engraving. It's got to be, if you're going to saturate it, you've got to be top class. Get a mediocre engraving, no. So aim for top class work. So now we have that, you see. Now we've got to come back to the shading. Um, this, you would have maybe put something like this, and here you would have, on like as we do on the scroll work here, which is supposedly to be a shadow again, you, you would have cut this type of thing around here and done it like so, you see. It doesn't look so well because I'm doing it fast, and I wouldn't have done it this way. I would have shaded it normally, but this is what we're trying to give you, you see. So here you would have got your graver, you would have got, done it fine here and maybe worked it cleanly like so. Okay, so you have these effects. So on the end, this is supposed to be the, the flannel, which is supposed to be this. You could leave it like that or you could put a little cut in here just to make another little shape like so. It, it ends up, it's, it just gives a little bit more... Well, variation. So you vary your scroll as you go along. Um, you, I'm doing it like he would do it. So we would put the graver in and we would set the cut back here. And then we would do a little bit of that. But finally, don't overdo it. It's two, two lines. That's all it needs. And if it's small, we, as I say, keep it fine and keep it neat. Um, this is what we... I'm trying to emphasize is with your graver, you uh, treat it like a, it could be like a, a drill that you drill up the road with, or it could be like a dentist drill, you know, something very fine. Try to make the variations in shadows with fine cutting like so and whatever is it's like that because it's large i'm just doing it as though we are going to shrink it here you would maybe put a couple of bits in excuse me i gotta make sure it doesn't come out of focus here so now i will be shading back into this here and around here you see now because this is open work we could shade to the back of this you see like that here right so that will make this a little bit darker you see this area here as though the sh sun is shining here and it's coming from the back of the scroll but we're leaving this here light we could put another if you like shading put it a little you can leave it if you've got good cutting, 
and it's small, you could almost leave it as it is because we've got this. So we're carrying it on. There's no cross hatching here at the moment. You could cross hatch. I could put just little one through here. It's a bit difficult from this angle, but there we are. And now I would, like Sam does, he would put these little cuts in here just because you look at Sam's father's work and his drawings. So I will put in what Sam has done, has done. Um, but it's nothing new, you see. We all did this. Um, it's one thing with Sam, and he understands, I'm going to say, is that he, Sam is in line from the Kell workshop and from there on because when, Mal uh, when Linda McKenzie came over to England and met me as a fairly novice engraver from Australia, we got together and I started to teach him some of the English scroll and he developed his style of scroll and then he taught Sam. And so Sam really has got a connection through this line with the Kell workshop and like myself, you see. So this is how things can go down the line. So not many people have these connections. See if I put this here. So they don't have all these connections. Um, we're going back, shall we say, to the ancients, if you like to call it that. Um, you, then, because you are taught a certain procedure, doesn't necessarily mean to say you've got to go through it all your life. Because if you like developing and become adventurous, you see other th types of scrolls, you introduce other bits into your design, you see somebody, some other engraver you emulate, but you don't really want to copy. You just develop by looking at the work, getting ideas. You see, you can never be conceited with this business, really, because I'm 86 years old now, and I'm still learning. I will see some of the engraving on, on here, or some of these design. I think that's a good design. But I'm not going to copy it, because I am fairly experienced in a way. But the idea makes me go, wow, yeah, that's another line I can go down, you see. And uh, I'm never bored. Since the age of 15 when I started, I was always enthusiastic. When you see a beautiful thing and quality and you have the ability or you develop the ability, it's never there. You don't realise it. it's got to come out. Somebody's got to bring it out of you. And uh, you've got to have a passion. Like Sam's got a passion. We've all got this passion. Most of the, the top engravers have got a passion. That's why they write the books and things like so. Okay, so now I'll take this one off the back if I wanted to because it's, it's, it's a big area that needs filling. There, I see. Pencil's not doing the fantastic work. I've got a bit of a rough underneath here. Something rumps up and down, but we always complain, don't we? We always good. They say a, a bad workman always blames his tools. Well, maybe he does, but a good workman can blame his tools because sometimes the material you're working with is a bit of a bugger, as we per se. Okay. And you've got to uh, fight sometimes these things. So it doesn't all come, you know, not all metals and everything you use is, um, you know, an easy job. When, when, you know, there's difficulties even near these painters and 
materials. Um, of course, it's the weather sometimes makes people feel a bit, oh, I don't fancy going to work, I don't fancy this or that. Or maybe you've had a bad day. But um, we've had this lockdown. And as I mentioned, I've never been bored. Never. I could always pick up a pencil, always fly, uh, play around. See, I can do this shading like so, like they all do. Because it's large, you see. But I'm not overdoing it. We're not getting this really. You can get a little bit sort of black in now and again. Now, what we're going to do with this guy here? So it's coming around. You can make another, all these leaves come off, but I'm just doing this. So we could take this around. As I mentioned, it's naturally it's a, it's a smaller version um, on a gun. And um, I saw a gun the other day, an old gun. And I said, that came from the workshop of Tom Saunders, or Sanders. Now, Tom Sanders was the engraver, the company, shall we say, that Harry Kell, his father, Henry Kell, senior, um, was apprenticed to, and Tom Saunders, and then they became partners. But Tom Saunders... Um, this is in Victorian times, this is the 1860s, and maybe a bit earlier, and his father too, but now he is, his father was in the 1840s and so on and so forth. But Tom loved doing the open work. He was noted for doing this type of star scroll, you see, whereas the Celts did the fine English scroll, a small scroll, and another version of that scroll. And... Um, gradually developed it for the London guns so that it became like the typical Harry Kell cut, which is the one cut and another cut over the top for the fine English scroll. Whereas his father and all the others used to do a version of this, very, very small, but cut away the background. Got a bit scratchy sometimes. And didn't have any microscopes. So... And you had a limited time, you know. Um, gun makers weren't always willing to spend a lot of money on these things. You had to negotiate and f uh, more or less fight for your next job because there was somebody down the road that could do another job cheaper. Um, so this is how we would move and do this, you see. We could take this here. So we're going to go up here. This could be the back again. We will do that to, to fill in. Um, so here we will make a bit of a shadow down here and take it here and then bring it up there. And we could darken this a bit here, just to give it another. So it's a difficult thing. Um, withdrawing some of this we're so used to cutting it with a, a graver and if your metal is good you know you get better results than you do drawing sometimes you see because your graver tells you what to do this pencil doesn't we, I'm trying to adapt the pencil to what the graver did you see in the movement and of course it doesn't Unless it's a flat, whereas, you know, like a wedge, like a calypso's um, pen or whatever. There, you can have it, and it will get um, thicker as it goes down, or thicker and thinner as you come this way. Well, that's that. We can do all these little things in here, just put a little bit of so. But that will give you the idea... Um, of what this could be. Now, now here, you see, th there's a gap there. This is what they call fluting. You put the flute here. Weldon Lister, he's a flute man. <laughs> flute, Weldon does all this fluting. He, he, you can spot Weldon's engraving a mile off. It's his trademark, you see, so that's it. 
And so that's what we would do. So we'd do another one around here. It fills in nicely. And um, we, sometimes they were open like that, maybe not closed up. They're almost like little commas, little comma marks that you would get in your writing, something like that, you see. And that's uh, what you get. You've got one there, you've got this one here. You could do that again, you see. So this is going to be a nice little cut, a little crescent moon. Yes, a crescent moon. So your crescent moon goes like that, like that, and it gets smaller as it comes up, you see. So that is one of the techniques. I've done it um, fast, Engraving-wise, if you're doing it and you're taking a pride in what you're doing and you're cutting finely and you're doing it, yes, it works differently. This is a demonstration. Now, there's another type of scroll here. You see, I, I saw a demonstration the other day with somebody doing a scroll, and he did a scroll, yeah. So we're doing the scroll here, and we've got this here. It's a long, it's an elongated scroll, you see. So we're not doing a scroll tight like this one. This one is elongated. This one is almost, I wouldn't say like a shepherd's crook, but it comes up. It's the fish hook again. It's a long barb, a long cut in, um, backbone here, you see, and it comes up to the barb here, right. So it gives you more of a stretch than this one. So this is what you have with um, the types of scrolls that you want to fling around all the place and go under and over. And so this is the tight stuff that's nice and neat in small areas of that style, which I mentioned because it's got this, you know where you're going because the, each of your leaves are more or less the same size and you just go click, click, click. This one you do, but you stretch it, you see. so. I think I've got it under the light. Hey, is that light? Make sure it's there. Right, here we go. So here's another leaf, you see, because this is a broad leaf, and, and because the scroll is a bit smaller, maybe I won't have so much of a problem. So now that's got to close in this area. So what we're going to do, we can take it here, because I have this a length of cut, with the engraver, you see. So put the shorter cut underneath to give it that round look. Could make it into a little sharp end. I'll do a, a few of those. So now I will do here again. I will bring this one out here with one cut. Another little fish hook here. Still a bit dodgy there. A big gap there. But we don't want to overdo this. So I will take the base here and do the little up rise s shape we should have come this way but this is a bit dirty way now i will take this cut here coming across here have that there as the backbone going around but there's still a gap between here you can leave that it will work out okay because i'm going to take this one remember you've still got to keep the stem of this plant and the leaf is going to come round here. All right. Like so. Oh, my dummy. So, this um, thing I'm resting on underneath here is, is, has, has got dimples in it and makes me throw it a different way. Okay. Slightly different to that, but that's it, you see. So now I could come here again come back here because I don't want to go all the way around like some of them do and just put one big leaf in big, you know and just leave it at that I like to get these nice leaves here of an even size so you start from the base of a plant where the leaf the first leaves start that gives the grounding so they're fairly larger here and as you go up the plant, they get smaller, okay? So uh, that one, I 
could bring it round just as almost a one and then come back another there. So you have that effect. And it's going to end up into this finial or the knob or whatever they... People like to call it. Every engraver, to a degree, has got their own terminology for this. And there's my dark background. That's my shadow area here coming here. Now, because it's getting smaller there, I don't want to put a whacking great leaf like that in because it's getting smaller. So I'll put maybe that, you see? I'll come in here. I could take it right the way through, shall I? Or shan't? Yes, I will. So I don't necessarily need to put anything in here. So I'll do that. Okay. So now, if I do that, I could make it look as though it's a little, shell, little cut here. And that makes this here look as though it's a little bit thicker. There, you see. Because that, that line doesn't touch anything here, it just comes from the inside here. Okay, so now we're going to go into the other area, make sure it's in focus for you guys. So I've got to turn the paper slightly because I'm coming at this angle and I'm crouched up under this. So I'm going here, right? I'm going to touch this because I might want to shade the background of this, you see. All this could be shaded in the background. All right. So now, there's the backbone here. Um, I'll take this one here, and I will swing it here. And that could come around here, up here, and form another one here. This one I've got underneath is awful. This board I'm resting on underneath. It's making the pencil go all over the shop. I don't know if this will make any difference. Try another pencil. So, there, you see? So, yeah, this may be a bit better. All right? So that we have this effect. Let's clean, oh golly. Clean that up. All right? We've got a big gap here. What we're going to do? Now you can still start here again and bring this one down like so and that could come down and touch that area so now you've got a limited area there to have to shade in and all this negative more or less equalizes the other the positive now we can come here we can do all types of little things with this if we wanted to. Yeah, you could take something off this way, you see. Still have those leaves there, but you could bring something off here. Shall I do it? Yeah, so there, I've got this here. And if I don't want to fill that gap in, and I just want to keep something like that, I could just make that here into a little area coming off here. So this is what you do when you start to think about you there. Yeah. Oh. So I don't necessarily need to bring this big leaf down into there to fill that in because I can go there, you see. And then I could bring this, if I wanted to, up here, make it this here, and bring that back into there, you see. And so now I would have this area here that I could cut away, like so. And all this can be done in the same fashion all the way along yeah. um, yep, carrying on again you see now I will show you one thing that makes it can make it a little bit more interesting see we would bring this out here and form the other leaves like so oh that's gonna be now <coughs> although I had this this my little bit of so I can dub that away because this is that tack stuff, fun tack, I think somebody calls it in America. So now I can put this line here and here and make this like that. And of course, you see there's a band. So this is leaves coming on a band here. See, so you don't have that. And you've got this little bit here to shade up to. 
pattern, see? And so it's not like these. You've got this band work in there, so you can get that type of thing here. And you imagine it like so here again, and you're bringing it in. You work in, and you can do all this type of thing here. I'll bring this leaf in, do that. And you still got that band there, you see? And so that saves you all this movement here. You can still bring something else up and bring it around again see it's all on this curve you don't know what you're doing but it's that distance there's my crescent that's all i want so i don't need to go and stretch right across anything i don't need to stretch I'm still am, am i still in front? yeah i'm still in front. okay so now i'm doing it here coming here i can get a knob there if i wanted to and got it here I'm sitting in an uncomfortable position I'm getting a bit cramped and I'm, so I'm doing that this was good in a minute I just got to stretch my leg uh-huh so I'm, I'm doing this you see so this is continuing up around like so and um, I've getting like that I've got a cramp in my leg for some reason old guys like me you know don't get old anybody Take my advice, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit of a booger sometimes. So, here we go, I'm starting the game. I never had any problems with, uh, when it, all through my working life, even when I had backache, I used to have a real bad back once, you know, because I used to do fencing as, as a sport, and somebody knocked me off the piece, you know, you shouldn't have a, con it's not a contact sport, but somebody did it when I was, we were fighting Epe, and uh, he did a, what they call a flesh attack, which was a very fast attack on, onto you. It's flesh means arrow, it was speed. And he came in, couldn't stop himself, and uh, knocked me off the piece, and I twisted myself. And, uh, so my, I had a bad back for a while, quite a few years really. Thought I was going to have it for life. I haven't had it since. But I could work all the time. If I got up in my chair, I had no problem, so I could work 14 hours a day if I needed to, which I do do on occasions. And, and it's, that's it, get in your position, be comfortable when you're working. Um, so I'm going around here now, and it's ending up like that. So all this then, here, could go do the same job through here, and it could do that through here you see do the same type of thing and it could follow up through there if it wants to so that's how that would work you see and so all this there then again would be cut away or you can cut it with lines that do this gray effect oh there's so many so many um, methods of doing it and it's according to how much if you've got a whole gun with all these different uh, facets, you've got two lock plates, you've got the um, the base of the action, you've got the trigger guard, you've got the levers, you've got the pins, you've got the, the detonating, that's the bumps on the whatever, then you have the barrels and all that type of thing. So it's not one unit. You say, oh, unit, oh, well, I have engraved a knife. Yeah, you've engraved a knife. You engrave a gun, you engrave three or four pictures on it. It's like painting four pictures instead of one. So here we go. So I'll leave you then, but that was just giving you the rough idea of what, um, how we can do these scrolls. I'll come back and I'll do it all over again for you to show you, just to keep you happy. See you soon. I'll say goodnight.